Macroeconomics is often about understanding the implications of economic shocks and government policies on the labor market. Employment matters to people. People's uh, view of their economic conditions is, is very much often related to whether they're employed and the wages that they receive. And so when I have a, a simplified a version of the labor market for the economy as a whole, and I say simplified because I'm, I'm not going to look at the, you know, the difference between labor demand and labor supply for skilled workers, for unskilled workers, for college graduates, for people with PhDs, with people with master's degrees. And I'm just going to lump all that stuff in together uh, for, uh, to, to help understand some of the basic concepts, especially when we have differing levels of flexibility of wages. This is an incredibly important way to think about how flexible the economy will be if something unexpected and bad happens. Now, so what I've got here is essentially just a supply and demand curve. I've got the price of labor, the nominal wages, and I'll talk about the nominal part in just a minute. We've got nominal wages, the price of labor on this axis. We've got an employment, economy-wide em employment on the horizontal axis. We've got labor supply, and we've got labor demand. And not surprisingly, if the wage goes up, this is saying that people will want to work more. Higher wages say, sure, I want part of that action. But from a firm standpoint, the higher the wage, the lower the uh, number of employees that you want to hire, all things else equal. Not surprisingly, what do economists care about? It's where these two things meet each other. That's where labor supply, that is the number of people that want to work, you know, they're, they're not, so I'm not including retirees, it's people that want to work, equals the amount of workers that firms want to hire. Okay, so if, <clears throat> let's think about a situation where that level of full employment, that looks like fall employment, let's make it a U there, not an, not an A. Let's imagine you've got full employment at some level. Now often in the U.S. economy, about 4% of, uh, of, the, of the total workforce seems to be about the, uh, the, the unemployment rate, the, uh, the full unemployment rate. So about 96% of the people you know, employed in, when he, at any moment, because some people are always looking for a job, you know, moving to a new uh, place, whatever. But you know, we've got some full employment level of output associated uh, with, uh, with this labor market. And here we've got the wage that is consistent with that. And imagine that there's some sort of adverse shock to the economy, on the demand side. So suppose that consumers suddenly get very pessimistic about the future. There's a huge drop in uh, government contracts in, uh, because of lower spending uh, at, the, at the federal level. It could be because of a drop, huge drop in the stock market, so people don't feel as wealthy. Um, so they're, they're buying fewer goods. The bottom line with this is that there can be a shock in labor demand associated 
with some problem. And now it becomes really important whether or not we think that in the economy as a whole, that nominal wages can fall. Now again, this is the, the, uh, the nominal wage is the number of dollars that you get when you work. It's not adjusted for inflation. It's just the, the, uh, that dollar figure. Now why is that important? It could be if you've had a drop in the, the economy uh, in demand as a whole, you'll have uh, goods that pile up unsold, the prices can fall, and you can have you know, adjust, adjustment in the real wage through changes in, in the price level. Uh, but generally speaking, people don't want to earn fewer dollars. That's a tougher, that's a tougher uh, thing to convince people to, uh, to do. You may have um, labor contracts to, to make that, that make that difficult. But let's set that aside. Let's say that they are flexible. Okay, you don't have these, these rigidities, and you have this drop in the demand for labor, and indeed, the wages can fall to adjust to the uh, amount of demand for goods. Now you'll see that we've got a new level of full employment output that's, ref that's associated with the falling demand, lower wages. I mean that, that, is a, that is a possible outcome that the economy shrinking, having these problems would lower the wages. Now over the long haul, the lower wages and the lower uh, prices of uh, goods uh, may may get the economy going again, the demand for labor would shift out over time. But let's just think about kind of the short run uh, story. If wages fall, people that want to work can get work. So if you've got flexible wages, there's a kind of self-regulation of the economy such that everybody that wants to work can. Now at the lower wage, fewer people will want to work, but that's you know, that's ultimately their choice. Now, so with flexible wages, the economy is self-adjusting. It is self-regulating, at least in theory. Well, let's come back to that story that I was uh, telling before. Say so people say, I'm not working for less, or you can't um, pay them less because of, of a contract. Well, that means that the wage stays where it is. And what you have is employment will drop the amount of, of labor that's demanded drops to there, and the difference between these two is unemployment. The number of people that want to work and the number of people that are being hired differs. So having fixed wages or sticky wages can lead to unemployment. And calls for government, potentially, to get the economy going through stimulus packages increase government spending, increase in the money supply, something. But it's very much um, you know, different views of how you respond to the shock depends in large part on whether or not you think that the labor market uh, functions uh, uh, very, uh, very quickly. Um, now, um, so that's a, a really critical part of the, of the story. Now, if you think it, it, that 
the labor supply over the long run is more inelastic than depicted here. where this is the full employment level of, of employment. So FE, full employment. And you got the wage. Okay, let's think about this same story. Here, the labor demand falling doesn't change the level of output, but instead is fully reflected in a drop in the wage as a consequence of lower demand. Okay, that's kind of the, uh, the, uh, the, the more extreme version of this. So if you think that labor supply over the long haul really is, is pretty much fixed, if you have flexible wages, you won't change the, the, the level of output at all because the wage falls enough to keep everybody employed. But once again, if the wage doesn't, doesn't move, then you've got unemployment. So how the labor market responds to these shocks really important in understanding what happens to the, the economy uh, as a whole.